The Wagner Incident by Matthew Kerwin A Traveller Book Review This book is a military sci-fi novel set in the Traveller universe of the Third Imperium. And, in short, it's great. I'm a military sci-fi fan and a huge fan of Traveller. I play the game quite often. And this book clawed at my soul so that I couldn't put it down once I started. It starts out with a battle as we follow the adventures of a self-propelled artillery crew. This kicks off the sci-fi nature of the book very well. The artillery piece itself is Grav Drive, and the enemy are the alien race known as the Droin, both tropes of the Traveller universe. The writing itself is swift and easy to read and laced with military terms that add realism to the scenario. The author also shows some knowledge of modern-day artillery practices, which, again, adds authenticity to the story. The plot follows the exploits and misadventures of two protagonists. Duncan is an artilleryman of the Planetary Army, and Karen a lieutenant of the Imperial Space Marines. The world itself is not a member of the Imperium, but has recently asked to become a member because, well, the world is aflame with war. Until very recently, the Droin and the humans have lived happily on the world in each other's company, the two civilizations separate but mixing around the edges of each with trade ongoing between them. But suddenly, and for no understandable reason, war breaks out. The Droin attack the humans, and the humans call for help from the Imperium. And that's where the spoilers would begin, but it's enough to say that the Imperial Space Marines are there protecting an embassy. Throughout the book, there are plenty of what I'll call hard traveller references, such as a planetary UPP, classic weapons that you'll recognise from the rule books, and aliens from the earliest days of traveller. The Imperium, Space Marines, and all are slipped into the world building without breaking the flow of the story. There are no info dumps in this book, at least none that I noticed, which is a good sign. Yet seeing the weapons you've played with in your own traveller games brought to life in a novel is definitely a, um, squee moment, especially when it's done as well as it is here. The text is compelling and not limited to combat. We learn about the characters and learn what motivates them. We also get some understanding of the aliens and how they think and behave when not fighting. All in all, it's a great little book, highly recommended by me. It's available from Drive Through RPG. It comes as a PDF and ebook, and if you're interested in getting it, there's a link in the description below. And now a few extracts. Move, move in, her car called out. Third squad, second squad, give us suppressive fire on that opening. First squad, we're going up the middle. The platoon's Gauss rifles opened up on the hole in the door cutting down at least one target that appeared in the opening. Another popped up behind him, though, and fired a rocket grenade at the SPG. It would have hit, but a marine from second squad was in the way and caught it dead on. The blast lifted the man off his feet and knocked him back three metres. Corsman! a car called out. The display in his helmet changed Shokashi's name to Red and then flagged him as KIA. He was the Corsman. Call a car! Sepeto! See if Shokashi's alive! Sometimes the can was a bit quick to call a man dead. It was worth checking. They were dismissed and escorted back to the landing pad. Von Kirkus joined them on the pinnace, which Mallory flew the short distance across the city to the Imperial Embassy. It was smaller than Walker had expected, not much more than a sizable manor house surrounded by a wall. There was little open land, but it had a landing pad in the back that was big enough for the small craft. As Mallory set it down, Killer Tri turned to Von Kiskus. I'm going to have Walker fly us back, Ambassador, and then return here. I'm going to leave the pinnace with you. Charming, he said as he looked round the interior. Is this to make an escape? In the worst case, yes. The Imperial sunburst on the side should be enough to deter attackers, but it also gives you the capability of checking on your friend, Dr. Anker, on Tristan, without involving the locals. I didn't appreciate the President's threat. The battery salvo was only a small part of tonight's artillery mission. He knew that as soon as the 90 rounds hit, 
multiple synchronized attacks would begin all across the front. The demons were supposed to have been surprised, not set up to deliver counter-battery fire within five seconds of impact. Marsh set them down to the right of the first gun, and they fired the anchors. Mag loaded, McDaniel yelled. Duncan acknowledged it, still staring at his panel. Fire control hadn't replied. Come on, FDC, he whispered. Target yet, sir? Gillum called up. He was itchy already. I'll let you know, Sergeant, Duncan called back. He typed in another message. FDC, Battalion 1. Be advised, six pieces RTF. Nothing. Duncan's radio cackled in his ear. Alpha, this is Charlie. Is our comm down? Do you have a target? Bryant, commanding his own gun, was getting itchy too. Negative battery. Hold for targets. A minute passed. Then two minutes. And then five. Gillum couldn't maintain the tension for that long, and sweat was soaking through his clothing. McDaniel broke the silence. Do you think the demons rooted that fast? But as soon as she had finished her question, data began rolling across Duncan's panel. We have a target. Mac coordinate 569. That's... Hell, that's to the east! He switched on his comm. Battery. Rotate 85 degrees. Target Mac coordinate 569. 